so I'm going to tie it uh, isonychia, tie a isonychia spinner on a size 12 hook. They're usually they're usually about uh, 12, 13 millimeters in length. So uh, uh, a size 12 hook does the trick. Uh, the dry fly hooks that I use. Um, and in 3.3, I can't remember all the other numbers, but uh, most people use the one, and it's uh, 9.4833, most people use the 9.4840, but the wire is a little bit heavier, I prefer the 3.3. It's, it's the lightest wire that Mustad makes, or any equivalent. So what we're going to do here is we're going to bend the hook in the horizontal plane, not in the vertical plane, but in the horizontal plane about a third of the way back from the hook eye. Can you see the bend? Mm -hmm. It's skewed. <coughs> uh, and it doesn't matter which way you bend it. So you're giving it a Okay. There we go. Uh, tan is usually my go-to thread unless uh, uh, what I'm tying demands something darker or lighter or a specific color, but tan is usually a go-to. So I'm going to start off with some thread, a thread base. And I'm not the world's fastest tire, so if you want to ask questions along the way, we can uh, deal with those as we get to them. And I'm a belt and suspenders guy, and I half hitch after every turn. That's something that my mentor taught me um, back in the winter of 55, 56. That's the last century, uh, 1955, 56. Uh, bobbins weren't in use, um, so he would just pull off about two feet of black silk thread, wax it, and uh, you'd have to double hit. You'd have to. Uh, put a hitch on it as you went for your uh, next material. So you'll see me frequently going back on the thread and uh, working off the thread as well as the bobbin. So for the tail we're getting uh, something that's suitable, whatever, uh, you know, if you want to use micro fibettes, I don't, I'll use some of this stuff, you know, off this, uh, off the back. Fibers are a little bit longer. I'm going to do this on the table, but I think you get the idea. The better. Uh, about the about the length of a hook shank, spinners always have uh, longer tails than the duns have, for some biological reason. Can you see that? All right. Mm -hmm. Hitch. Uh, now you can tie this uh, for any mayfly done. Just change the uh, change the hook size, change the coloration of the materials, but the uh, the methodology of tying will be the same. So. So remember, uh, people, th this uh, fly isn't bulky, it's the second adult stage um, and it's already fulfilled its uh, biological duty so there's not much left in terms of, uh, in terms of a body. So we'll cut about an inch or so off. Is that Antron? Antron, yeah. 
Uh, as long as it's got a specific gravity of less than one, uh, it'll do. So remember, if you tie it in with the curve towards you, the wing will be towards you. If it's curved the other way, put the wing the other way. So the wing goes in the inside of the curve. Got Everybody got that? Yeah. And that, that balances the fly. I think I better lay down some. take a turn behind. So this is going to lie in in the horizontal plane. Trimming away the uh, butts, the extra stuff. Uh, trim the wing up the length of the body, more or less. Uh, so why do you put the wing just on one side? The traditional spinner has the wing on both uh -huh. sides as a straight loop. What's yeah. the advantage of having the I'm, wing? I'm glad. I'm glad you asked. Um, because I bent the shank of the hook, if you put two wings on it, it would spin. When you cast it, it would, it would twist the leader. So you still have the end. When you, when you see the finished product, it has that little bit of a bend, and it just doesn't look as static as the usual airplane spent wing spinner does. It just gives it that little bit extra. Um, as far as the other wing is concerned, um, there's several reasons why you don't need it. First of all, it's a highland wing and it would be sticking up. So one, when they land crippled, you know, one wing is up and one wing is on the water. It's resting on the water. And this is the one we're tying in. Um, that highland wing wouldn't be seen. There's not enough bulk for it to be any sort of a strike trigger. Um, and the third thing is it would be a, it would be a bugger to tie and it would twist your leader. Now, does it matter if you're fishing stream left or stream right? As no, oh, I, I don't think so. No, I don't think so, no. It's just, it just, it, it looks, it looks completely different than uh, any spinner that you've, uh, you, you, you've used up till now. Uh, the next thing is, when you tie it in, sunny side to the back, so that the hackles flare forward. The reason is, if you cast your fly or caught enough fish, what happens? Anything that you tie in will end up shifting, tending towards the back. So you tie that forward to overcome that eventuality. So I'm going to tie that in like so. A couple of wraps at the back. I'm going to have to use fingers. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, it's not going to turn out as well as I'd like it to.
Now those uh, those fibers uh, uh, also will uh, dimple the water, uh, and they could be flaying legs. Just gives it that life to it. Storage. Yo. Did you put the hackle in front and behind? Them? Behind, yeah. Two turns behind, and uh, two or three in front. Yeah. Thanks for uh, asking. Okay. Yeah, not my not my best tie. And uh, then we can put uh, a little bit of uh, that uh, dubbing in front. that to you in a horizontal plane. Does that show? Does that shows the curve? Yes. And it shows the wing. Um, 